<clears throat> well, I'm going to start with just some um, of introductions. And please don't be afraid to chime in because I want this to be as casual um, as we can make it uh, being a webinar where I would like it to um, be a little fluid and allow us to communicate and talk about home energy um, in a more conversation base. So if you want to raise your hand, I'll let um, you guys um, speak up and we can uh, share awesome ideas. So, well, welcome to the Cool Davis Home Energy Hour. I am your host, Chrissy, and I am the energy field coordinator for Cool Davis. Uh, cool Davis strives for, to help our community lower their energy usage in three main categories, and that's in home energy, transportation, and in consumption. Today, I wanna to talk about home energy. Um, I, again, hope this is kind of a casual uh, gathering, uh, similar to meeting at the farmer's market. Some of you know that until shelter in place order um, uh, started. Um, my main outreach was at the farmer's market. Uh, I would sit at the Cool Davis booth and I might bring um, some uh, uh, saving tips and tricks like promoting solar or line drying laundry, but mostly it was conversation based and people would come to me all the time and say, how, did, how does Cool Davis feel about this? And um, what does Cool Davis think of uh, heat pumps or whatever their question is. And that was what I enjoyed the most. So again, please, if you have questions, don't be shy, go ahead and, um, and post them up and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Uh, Leslie Krenna is here to help me filter the questions. And so Leslie, don't forget to, for you to chime in. If you see a question that I've missed over, you can pop in and uh, let me know uh, when I can pause and take questions. So a little background on me. I am a licensed mechanical engineer whose professional background is in building energy analysis. Um, I look at buildings, I look at plans of buildings, and I make suggestions and I do models to try to minimize energy use. Um, I also try to take into account um, the life cycle costs and the externalized costs of uh, doing different energy efficiency techniques. Um, externalized costs are costs to our environment and to the people and to the resources that don't quite factor in in the energy usage. So in the kilowatt hour, dollars per kilowatt hour, your dollars per therm. And um, I'm really just trying to strive to make it important that some of these costs, like the environmental impacts, um, are appreciated. Um, I'm also an environmental engineer. Um, that's what um, I got my um, bachelor's degree in. So I look at uh, society as a system with finite resources uh, that we're currently running in a linear fashion. So we need to use renewable and we need to use conservation measures um, uh, before we really talk about generation. So let's get our baseline energy use as low as possible. And sometimes those actions are expensive, but sometimes they're not expensive at all. Sometimes the most energy efficient thing you can do is not do anything. And this pandemic is a great example of what doing can do. So I wanted to start off by asking everyone about the silver linings. You've heard a lot about that, um, about the silver linings of staying home at more. So I'm going to try to launch a poll and bear with me because I am also not very technologically familiar with this. And um, I want everyone to uh, look at these different examples of what might be a silver lining from an environmental standpoint and from a personal standpoint and go ahead uh, and fill out uh, whatever ones that you identify with. And this is also something where there's, I know there's lots more that I'm not, I haven't included. So go ahead and put that in the chat feature and we'll make sure that we um, uh, uh, incorporate all of that. Awesome, I already see some responses with the less commuting, cleaner air, of course, uh, more gardening time, <laughs> more family time, of course. This is a great opportunity for us to stay at home and even to do some projects, including energy efficiency projects that you might have had on the back burner and we can reprioritize. Um, so great, so I see a lot of, we have a little bit of cooking <laughs> uh, uh, 
it was a benefit at the beginning, but now I'm over it. So I'm like, no, we need to eat out more often because, um, but uh, cooking more is just another one of those things when you think about the environmental impacts um, and the waste impacts um, can be compounded. So thank you all for sharing that. I'm gonna end the polling now and see if we can share the results. So we have a, uh, yeah, it looks like the majority of people, uh, the less commuting, cleaner air, the connection with friends and family time are the most popular. So um, that's awesome. And, uh, and if you have anybody wanted to uh, more, oh, let's see, Kristen says more people on the green belt. Yes, that's true. There's more people walking. The exercise is great. So these are some of these um, benefits these silver lines of doing this and there's um, want to just make sure that we can um, emphasize the positive and so we can make some of these changes that we're doing right now long term how do we make it so people can commute less um, do more uh, remote working how do we maintain the clean air so um, i'm next i'm going to um, share um, our blog post. So we have a, um, uh, I wrote a blog post recently and about sheltering in place and uh, what we can do to lower our home energy. And um, a lot of these things are simple and I'm not, uh, we do have lots of suggestions about um, how to do more complicated things and bigger investment things. And I'll show you, um, I mentioned the silver linings in here, but a lot of the things, the first steps, um, if you look here on number one, two, three, there's like keep an eye on your energy usage. Sometimes just looking at your bill closely um, doesn't cost you anything and it can help you identify patterns. Uh, you can set up bill forecast alerts, which was, is a way that um, PG&E uh, notifies you if your bill's gonna be too high. Uh, you can pick the right electrical plan for yourself and then to look closely where your energy goes. And then number five is see how small steps add up to big savings. And then six is the big investments for bigger savings. So I'm gonna scroll down um, and we can come back to looking at your energy bill a little closer if we have time at the end, because I'm starting to um, uh, get some ideas on how to vlog that. How do we share how to look at your utility bills and really be able to disaggregate? So here is some of the um, smaller, lower cost items you can do to lower your home energy usage. Uh, programming your thermostat, turning off unnecessary lights, LED lighting, and changing your filter. And then also line drying your clothes. And so I wanted to share with you all a, a short YouTube uh, movie of, uh, that we started a uh, YouTube Cool Davis channel. <laughs> So let's go ahead and uh, click on this movie and see if I, uh, we can watch it together. And please stop me if you cannot hear this and I'm going to uh, mute myself right now. Hi Davis, this is Chrissy Backman, Energy Field Coordinator for Cool Davis. Welcome to Live Cool Davis, an ongoing series of blog posts that we're launching as part of our 10th anniversary and the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. We'll cover ways to reduce your carbon footprint in transportation, home energy, and consumption. We know you're sheltering in place. I'm sheltering in place too. So we wanted to give you some ideas on how to manage energy in your home so you can avoid surprises on your bill. So today's topic is how to change your home heating and cooling system filter. Changing your filter is so important because a dirty filter constricts your airflow and makes your system work harder than it has to, wasting energy and money. You should change your filter every couple months um, and more often when we have bad air quality or if you have allergies. So most centralized systems are just like mine. So let's go over here and I'll show you how I change my filter. Let's go. My uh, heating and cooling system is in my attic. So I have to use a step stool to get to my return register. Your return register could be located on a wall, in a closet, closer to your garage, wherever the return register may be located. Um, so I have two little uh, clips that undo the filter. Yours may be similar, or you may have to use a screwdriver. Um, in here, you can see I have the old filter. 
I'll remove it. It's very dirty, brown, filled with lots of fuzz balls. And uh, you could see that how a clogged filter, just like if you were using a filter for your mask, a dirty one's gonna be harder to breathe. This is gonna make it harder for your system to breathe. So your furnace uh, and uh, air handler uh, also want the clean air to protect the equipment, not just the air quality. So it's always, it's a good idea to clean it. While I'm up here, you can take um, a vacuum or a duster and just make sure all the um, cobwebs and um, dust balls are removed. Um, it's a good idea to write down what size your filter is. Mine is a 14 by 30 by one. And then you can go online um, to your local hardware store um, and order it to have it delivered to your home if you don't want to go out right now um, or uh, hardware stores are still open uh, during the shelter in place activity so you can find this but just maybe call ahead to make sure they have the size that you need my uh, return register uh, can handle up to a two inch filter so i went ahead and bought one um, that is two inch so that you can see this is thicker and uh, this allows for um, the filter to have a longer lifespan as well as it increases airflow. So if you can um, get a thicker filter as long as it can fit into your return register. So I bought mine online and have a subscription so I get four filters a year. So I can always have a few on hand and it reminds me to um, make sure to go ahead and change my filter. So there is a wrong and a right way to install a filter. The air has to flow in a certain direction and the filter usually has an arrow. You can see this air flow up. Um, so the air is getting sucked up into my system. So I'm gonna point the arrow going into the system. So I install it here. Close my grate. Voila, all done. And you should do that again every three or four months. That's all for now. Find more cool solutions on our website, cooldavis.org. And you can find a link to our cool solutions checklist in the description below. Post your cool solutions on social media using the hashtag livecooldavis. And you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. Hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, live cool, Davis. Okay, let's make sure. Okay, great. So um, that was, um, is everyone, did everyone see that okay? Can we do like a thumbs up, thumbs down? <laughs> um, I saw Leslie mentioned that it wasn't completely viewable for her. Well, so, Simple things like that um, are uh, uh, really important, making sure that your HVAC is not working any harder than it, than it can. And let's see, we got some competition cool, and I see the video fine, so thank you for that feedback. Um, uh, so uh, the furnace filter was one great idea, um, and I wanted to start another poll to ask who it, uh, who thinks that's a difficult thing to do because um, it's one of those um, uh, items that, or actually my poll is who's changed theirs recently. So let's, let's do a little tally. Who's done it? Come on, don't be shy. I got a one yes. I got a one no. <laughs> Great, all right. So that's, uh, I'll go ahead and end that. I think we, I got it for all five of us. Come on, we're, uh, the polling's not too difficult. So we're gonna see four out of five of us said yes. So good job, everyone. And now if there is any kind of comments um, or questions about um, maybe not knowing how to change your filter or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer that.
Okay, so Kristen says, um, do you recommend a more restrictive or less restrictive filter? Well, it really is going to depend on um, what you're uh, filtering for. If you, um, uh, I generally for energy efficiency standpoint, say the, uh, the least restrictive. So that's actually the lower MERV rating and the lower filtration rating. Um, and that will clear out all the bunnies and dust balls and everything that might damage your equipment. So um, that would be my recommendation for the energy efficiency standpoint. Um, if you have allergies um, or if you're sensitive, you may have uh, uh, want a higher filtration. So the filtration goes from the most basic, which is just dust and then um, pollen and then all the way up to viruses. So um, if you're using your home to filter, for example, in smoke, when it's smoky in our, uh, we've had a, a forest fires in our area, um, that is a consideration to increase your uh, filtration. And again, it will uh, increase your energy usage, but that's a price you might want to pay uh, to have a cleaner air. All right, any other questions? That's all I see for now. Okay, so the next topic um, on uh, my blog was something so simple and I love doing it and I just did it today and that's line drying your clothes. So line drying your clothes is an awesome thing to do at this point because we have a little extra time. Um, and I've uh, really appreciated it. I started this when my kids were doing cloth diapering and it's kind of, I call it Zen drying because you get to organize your laundry and put it out there, let it sun dry it. There's no way to get your whites whiter um, than um, sun bleaching. So um, if you guys will bear with me, I will um, uh, put on my next little video you guys can watch together called line drying your clothes. Um, I'll go ahead and skip the intro since it's the same as before. Mm -hmm. Woo Today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about line drying your clothes. Line drying your clothes is free, easy, and even your grandma used to do it, so I know you can do it too. It's a beautiful day in Davis, California. So go ahead, pause, go wash those pajamas you've been in way too long and join me out here. We'll line dry our clothes together. Let's go see. Okay, so I'm out here on my side yard. I got my basket of laundry, my clean laundry, and I wanted to show you four different ways uh, that will uh, help in your line dry never. First, get yourself a clothes drying rack. This is really nice because I can put it in my laundry room when it's raining. Um, it folds out and it actually holds quite a bit of clothes. I also have a longer line. You can see it's right, right above your head. It's gonna go that way. And that's a bit good for sheets, towels, and other really, really big uh, items. Um, I also really love this guy. This is a sock caddy. This is um, in the shape of an octopus. So each one of these clips can be used for socks underwear, small little items that um, kind of get are hard to hang on the clothes drying rack. And the other thing that saves a lot of time is uh, using hangers. So part of the benefit of line drying your clothes is I'm doing sorting and getting it closer to being put away. I don't know about you, but I always find that my laundry stays, my clean laundry stays in the laundry hamper longer than I would like. So uh, right from the washer, it goes right to the hanger and the hanger, once it's dried, goes right into the closet. So. Let's get right to putting the clothes on the clothesline. Always remember to wipe your clothesline down so you don't get your clean clothes dirty. It took me only about seven minutes to put the clothes on the clothes rack, the clothesline, hung some up and I used the sock octopus too. It, I was pressing out the wrinkles as I put things up so the clothes will dry as straight as possible. Easy peasy. So here's my clothesline and you can see that I've uh, Tried to put the clothes on as neatly as possible. That's gonna aid in uh, folding it neatly. And also I sorted, so I put uh, my clothes over here. This is some of my son's clothes. There's the rest of his clothes. My daughter's in the middle and my husband's in the back. And this is the towels hanging on the clothesline. And here is my shirts that I hung directly on the hangers. So convenient, ready for closet. 
Depending on your weather, the laundry could be dry in as little as one hour, so I came back in the afternoon to fold and sort. My neighbor shared a tip because she has allergies and line drying can activate her allergies due to dust and pollen. So to mitigate, she line dries 90% of the way and then fluffs in the dryer for the rest. Thanks, KK, for sharing. Okay, so that is um, the folded laundry. Again, I even was able to fold pants first, then shirts, underwear and socks, pants, shirts, underwear, and pajamas. And the same thing with mine, so I started with the clothes. So my bile, my husband's bile, Lillian's pile, Lucas's pile. I don't know, it just seems like a, a, a little trick. So see, line drying your clothes isn't that hard. I hope you had a little fun. I hope you get out in this fantastic weather and take the time to line dry your clothes because you don't need to spend money on your energy uh, when the sun will do it for free. All right, okay. while I have you a captive audience and talking about line drying your clothes, let's talk about a few ways you can save energy while washing your clothes. First, if you get the opportunity to get a new washing machine, please get an Energy Star. It saves water and energy, and it can make a big difference on your monthly utility bills if you wash as much laundry as I do. Second is use the quick wash. Use the quickest cycle you can. It's really uh, sufficient in washing most loads. Um, third, washing cold water. Cold water is also sufficient to do most of your laundry. And in my case, my hot water heater's on one side of my house and my washing machine's on the other. So even if I try to use hot water, all I'm doing is filling up the line and it's not even getting to the tub. And then the last thing is if you have an extra uh, spin cycle or it's called max extract on my washing machine, go ahead and use that because that will get your clothes um, a little bit uh, more wrung out so that you, when it gets to drying, it doesn't take so long. Okay, so that is all my washing tips that I got. Post your tips on Live Cool Davis. Hashtag Live Cool Davis. That's all for now. Find more cool solutions on our website. That's all for now. Okay, great. So that was just another video. These are this is what's been keeping me entertained um, while I shelter in place. And uh, so, does anybody have any other questions about? line drying your clothes. I have one other poll I'd like to do and um, that would be about line drying your clothes. Let's see. Line drying your laundry. Okay so who thinks that line drying your laundry takes more or less time than using the dryer? Go ahead. I would say most people Oh, depends, yes, or it depends. So a lot of people think that line drying your clothes takes longer, and it does for the drying part. But as I mentioned in my video, the sorting is really, and the folding is really what takes a lot of time in my perspective. So um, I uh, have found that by doing line drying the clothes, it actually, shortens the amount of folding time and shortens the amount of um, uh, uh, sorting time because, well, I have three kids, so that's what takes me so long to do all my laundry. Okay, great. So we got mostly depends. Do we have any um, other questions? Let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Kristen had a great example. It says she went to the PG&E website to look at her daily electricity usage, and it was always higher on Sundays, and it took a while for her to figure out, but it was her dryer. And I wanted to say, yes, that's exactly it. I had the very, very um, uh, similar situation where I was blaming my kids and their energy usage um, on their electronics, and um, uh, lo and behold, I put a, a kibosh on that. I said, no electronics this next weekend. And we went outside and we played, um, but we still were around the house doing chores and stuff. And I still had the spike. And so what happened was I looked closely at my energy usage and it was my electric dryer. So, yep, that can, that's definitely um, a significant contributor. Even if you have a gas dryer, it still uses a ton of electricity. Um, just for getting the motor uh, going and spinning that, all that laundry. All right, so that was our line drying your clothes. Um, and I didn't have any other questions or answers. 
So um, the next um, uh, topic that we I was covering in my blog post was use um, LED lights. And LEDs have come so far and they can be used almost anywhere. And so um, I made a video to share um, all the benefits of LED lights. So maybe we could do that next, if I can find it. Mm -hmm. Now this one, you guys will know, um, you have a top secret viewing because this is not even posted live yet. Um, the, uh, I'm still editing it. This is going to be um, edited because I did two things here. I uh, did the LED lighting as well as the um, how to dispose of your CFLs at the hazmat at Yolo County Landfill. Um, and I'm going to split this into two videos. So it's a little bit longer, but um, I thought I would share both sides and then we can talk about it. So let's go ahead and press play. Hi Davis, this is Chrissy Backman, Energy Field Coordinator for Cool Davis. Welcome to Live Cool Davis, an ongoing series of blog posts that we're launching as part of our 10th anniversary and the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. We'll cover ways to reduce your carbon footprint in transportation, home energy, and consumption. We know you're sheltering in place, I'm sheltering in place too, so we wanted to give you some ideas on how to manage energy in your home so you can avoid surprises on your bill. Today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about LED lights. LEDs are hands down worth it. They last so much longer and can save you so much money when compared to a regular light bulb. LEDs come in all brightness levels and all colors so they can be used anywhere in your house. LEDs also produce far less heat than a standard bulb. With summer right around the corner, one way to make sure your home stays cool is to make sure you're using LED lights. LEDs can be for lamps. LEDs can be decorative Edison bulbs. They can also dim. Woohoo! LEDs can be under counter lights. Woohoo! LEDs can be mood lighting. LEDs can be over counter disco lights. Woohoo! LEDs can be exterior lights. LEDs can be holiday lights. LEDs can be can lights. The can lights can dim. Ooh. Can lights can significantly contribute to your energy use as well as the heat gain of the interior house. I just went through my house and counted 15 can lights. Do you have 15 can lights? or even four, the savings can really add up. So consider using an LED retrofit kit. It takes a standard screw-based can light and turns it into a slick, flush-mounted LED cool light. So LEDs can be used anywhere in your home for 80% less energy and cost than a standard bulb. LEDs last 25 times longer too and can be recycled. So go ahead and replace those old bulbs. And next I'll show you how to properly dispose of CFLs. Did you know that CFLs are considered hazardous waste? So you can't throw these in the garbage. You gotta recycle them. Household hazardous waste is collected free for Yolo County residents. UC Davis students living on campus have a campus collection program and I'll share a link in the description below. The household hazardous waste program for Yolo County is located at the Yolo County landfill. And a little later, I will do a little field trip to show you exactly how easy and convenient it can be to recycle your CFLs and other household hazardous waste. Since I'm going to the landfill to do hazmat, I looked through my house and I could find these other materials that they'll also accept. There's vegetable oil from my deep fryer. This is other CFLs. And this is a bunch of batteries I've collected over a year or so. Um, there's printer cartridges and there's some small appliances with integrated batteries like this beard trimmer and this old cell phone. So let's see what they'll take. So we're heading to the Yolo County landfill, the dump. 
and it is up on Pole Line Road. So I'm gonna go north on Pole Line right outside of town and I'll show you where what the turnoff looks like when we get there. So here's a little time-lapse video of my drive. You go north on Pole Line Road that turns into County Road 102. You'll take a right on 28H. It's right after 29. And so you go right and a little bit further, you'll see a little hill and that's the Yolo County Landfill. So we're just standing in line. I think the line can be pretty long at the dump, so. Uh, be prepared for that. It looks like they're screening everyone at the gate um, and also there's a sign that says they're not taking cash so if you're coming to use the landfill um, you have to use credit card, debit card, or checks. Once you get inside the gate you turn left towards the hazardous material recycling area. The big blue barn thrift store you see in the background is still closed at this time, as well as the reuse paint shed. I hope they open soon. When you pull in, you'll see signs for no smoking to turn off your engine and to stay in your car. They'll unload it for you so it's very safe, quick, and convenient. So you don't have to get out of your car. They unload it. They don't want you to get out of the car. Things in the trunk. Yep, uh, it's batteries, CFLs, and some uh, oil. Okay. Status. Easy peasy. Okay, so they took everything. They took the batteries, the um, small electronics, and um, the oil. So those were all things they're accepting. Uh, we, the gentleman at the gate said they are doing it Friday and Saturday. And the um, gentleman collecting the materials did confirm that for, uh, uh, they'll do at-home pickups. Uh, normally reserved for elderly and disabled people, but right now with the coronavirus, you can call and schedule a pickup and they'll come and get your things right from your house. So uh, that sounds super convenient. Um, everyone has to wear a mask. I saw that sign on there. Um, so if you do come to the day, dump um, or the landfill, um, make sure that you have a mask and everyone there was wearing masks and face shields, so it felt very safe. That's all for now. Find more cool solutions on our website, cooldavis.org, and you can find a link to our cool solutions checklist in the description below. Post your cool solutions on social media using the hashtag livecooldavis, and you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. Hit that like button and subscribe, and until next time, live cool, Davis. Okay, so you can see I got my uh, kids to be my camera people. <laughs> Leslie says, you make going to the landfill fun. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I love the landfill. It's not so bad. Um, I'm a big fan of all uh, elements of our civil engineering. So you'll find me wanting to go to the wastewater treatment plant and the drinking water treatment plant, the landfill, and I think it's one of the best things we can do for our kids is to uh, get them to go to the recycle center and really see those things in action because if we only focus on the consumption part of it and we don't focus on what happens to the stuff after it leaves our home or before it gets to our home, uh, then you're not looking at the um, the uh, whole system. And again, I'm a systems engineer, so I want to look at it uh, from uh, cradle, from the start to finish. So um, is there any other questions so far about um, uh, any of the topics that we covered? Um, I know they're basics, but these are the kind of ideas that sometimes people forget that can be very impactful. So um, as you, uh, all the videos showed, um, we have been really trying to promote um, uh, the um, um, uh, posting on social media. So you can post anything. If you, po if you take a picture of your line drying your clothes and go hashtag livecooldavis, that would really make my day. 
Um, okay, we did get one uh, message. Uh, where is the Recycle Center and do they give tours at least during non-COVID times? So the Recycle Center uh, Recology is on 2nd Street, I believe. Um, and they do do tours. And I've been on the tour. I then went on a tour with my uh, elementary school children. And then also uh, with my Girl Scouts. So my, when my daughter was in Girl Scouts. And so you can call to schedule again, probably not right now um, with uh, the uh, COVID-19, but um, they do do tours. They, and they, you don't have to be a group affiliated with this uh, school or anything. They said anybody can go. So you can coordinate a uh, field trip with your neighbors or your friends or your family to go there. And it's really nice because you get to really look at the sorting mechanisms um, and looking at the um, uh, the value of sorting. I know a lot of people in Davis are like, do I really have to put the paper on one side and the plastic on another? And they'll be able to answer that question for you. Um, they also explain um, the plastics are going and that's a very um, interesting in conversation too. What, what, what is actually happening to our, all of our plastics? I recommend watching this documentary, The Story of Plastics, if you haven't watched it yet. It came out for um, uh, Earth Day. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about um, sharing stories. And I wanted to show you my, um, the Facebook uh, story sharing. I've tried to pull up, um, at least so far, who has shared um, under the hashtag Live Cool Davis. And I think this is important because sharing your stories is the best way to normalize these behaviors and to make people think that it's not a big deal. So uh, let's see if I can pull that up as well. This is just my um, uh, personal Facebook account. And I went in and I looked up hashtag live cool Davis. And so this is my friend. And so I'm able to see her post. Um, and she did this idea. So uh, she was able to um, uh, use her greenhouse because her she's done with her starts to do her laundry. And I was thought that was such a great idea that greenhouses gets so warm and she has the benefit of having the uh, clothes dry flat, which is always, um, you know, the delicates like to dry flat so you don't have creases in them. So she said she's going to start using that. And I just loved that idea so much. I begged her to share it. And that's not maybe something you'd normally share, but I think that it's a really good idea. So let's see if I can go back. Um, the other ones are mostly cool Davis posts, um, uh, some Earth Day posts. And I wanted to find another one, but I think it was my friend posted it as a comment. And she uh, lives up in Humboldt and she had a trailer and she would take, uh, she would take her trailer and um, draw, uh, ha she, had a, she had her whole line, um, a clothesline in there and it was really kind of cute because it's so rainy up there that she doesn't get a lot of outdoor drying time, so. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we have about 15 more minutes. I was thinking maybe we could um, uh, allow everyone to talk and see if there's any other questions or comments. So I'm going to go ahead and allow you all to talk. And if you have something to say, you would have to unmute yourself. Um, I know everyone's sharing video, but if you would like to chime in, now's the time. I should have, I should have uh, seeded some questions. <laughs> Chrissy, I have a question. Oh, thanks, Sarah. Okay. So do, do you have any recommendations when it comes to like servicing your air conditioner, like before, you know, the summertime usage, because we've lived in the same house for six years and then we've never done anything to it. And I feel like, um, we should probably tune it up or I don't know, clean it out somehow. Yeah, that's a really good idea to um, have a tune-up and you can have a, uh, a professional person uh, come out and do a tune-up for you. Um, it's always good to clean out your um, uh, condenser, which is um, the unit sitting outside your house. to Make sure there's no leaves or anything like that that's in the fan coil. But if you've got a professional person, I think that they'll do that. They'll vacuum that out, make sure the coil's all clean. 
um, and functioning properly. And it's actually a good idea to do a check, especially if you said it's almost six years since you've um, uh, had the same system uh, before it breaks. So I'm always into trying to do maintenance, not when it's an emergency. So if you had someone come out and they were able to identify anything um, that needed replacing or fixing, uh, it's much better to do it now where air conditioning is not necessary as much as if you were to wait, it would, uh, you know, if it's 110 degrees and your air conditioner breaks, you, it's a right. whole different ball game. So yeah, do it earlier. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? All right, if you guys don't say anything, I'm gonna just keep showing you YouTube videos. Hmm, all right, so if you want, I can go and share the last, was um, a, uh, a presentation I gave at a workshop um, last January, which was the Home Heating and Cooling Workshop. And um, we, go, we went over, um, uh, knowing your system and becoming familiar with your system. Uh, so it's basically uh, HVAC is home, uh, <laughs> home uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. So knowing your um, uh, HVAC system is actually really important to know what type of systems you want to have and what type of systems uh, might need maintenance. Um, and so just knowing what you have is the first step in knowing if you need something better, right? Uh, and also identifying your system because you get to learn how old your system is. And if your system is borderline needing replacement, say it's 20 years old, um, doing a little research now is such a big benefit uh, than trying to wait until your system breaks and trying to fix it in an emergency situation. So I can pull up um, that presentation because there was one thing that really um, um, I, Kristen alluded to, which was looking at your electricity bill. So let's see, where's my PowerPoint? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh man, never mind. I can't find where I put it. <laughs> see if I can get to it anyways. Okay, I was able to pull, I had it on PowerPoint, but now I pull it up on Google Slides real quick. So I'll share that with you, okay? If it can load. All right. You got, I'm having my technical difficulties. Okay, window, share screen. Okay, so this is from last year. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through it really fast because we only have a few minutes. Um, this was about a, an hour long presentation, but um, I wanted to skip right to some of the exciting parts, which are uh, looking at your utility bills. Okay, so you see that there? This is a copy of my PG&E bill um, uh, when you log in. Um, actually, it's my agency, who's Justin. I think I, yeah, blocked out my account number so you can't see it, but this was one bill um, in December. And um, when you come to your PG&E energy use details, this is where you can, um, if you saw my blog post, you could um, talk about comparing your rate plans right here. So if you might wanna uh, do this because it will tell you whether or not you would benefit from a time of use plan versus um, a tiered plan. Uh, this is your energy use detail. You can compare your bills to different months and uh, from the previous month, and you can do a home energy checkup where you answer a bunch of simple questions about the system and what type of house you have, and it can estimate what your energy um, looks like. So when you go to your energy usage details, it's going to give you um, one uh, example is monthly. This is how much energy I use per month, and it will also 
um, base it on, um, uh, graph it up with your weather. And the green button data is for people that really like Excel spreadsheets like me and uh, want to download your data. So when you download your data using that green button, uh, you can graph it up in your own um, spreadsheet. So this was, um, I did this quite a few years ago, but this is my electricity use and my natural gas usage. And I'm trying to get my base load by identifying what is the energy use I use during the swing months for electricity and being able to disaggregate that compared to what is my heating and cooling load. Um, and then for um, the, uh, oh yeah, that was for electricity and for gas. And the natural gas usage is my summer usage because I'm not heating in the summer. So this is what's going to constitute my water heating because I have a natural gas water heater, my cooking because my cooktop is natural gas, and maybe my dryer. So I use those in the um, uh, summer, but I don't use anything else. And then you know everything above that line is your um, heating and cooling need. Uh, p and &E also shows the home energy checkup. And if you put, uh, go through that and answer some questions, and again, this is for PG&E uh, customers only, and our Valley Clean Energy um, customers that still use the PG&E uh, payment portal. Um, and this is fun because it helps to disaggregate where energy usage is. It estimated my water heating, heating, and electronics. So by looking at this pie chart, you can really try to estimate um, how much energy goes into each section. And I had already um, uh, told them I replaced most of my, my lights with LED, so I have a relatively low um, electricity usage. So um, let's see if I can. The disaggregation that story I wanted to share with you is this. And so Kristen, this is what I did. So I went and graphed my daily energy usage and you can see my weekends are peaks. So all these are about Saturday and Sunday. And so I uh, really when, this is, I really, really explored my electricity usage. I even checked out from the library, a kilowatt was a little device that um, can um, uh, measure electricity usage for each one of your plug-in loads. And I would, thought I was doing so good. And so I did that this weekend. And you can see this is my lowest day. I was like, okay, I went around and I unplugged everything. And then the next day I had another spike. I was so upset. And I blamed my kids, but they had, they were not to blame. It was my dryer. So this was, this type of visualization can really benefit um, your understanding of where your energy goes. So get using daily usage and looking at it and looking for patterns. Um, and I made assumptions and my assumptions were wrong and I was able to correct my assumptions. So I thought that was really cool. Um, the other bits on my, well, let's see, you know what? I think that's probably the most from that PowerPoint I wanted to share. So I'll stop sharing that now. We'll come back uh, to see if there's any other questions. We just have about eight minutes left. Um, and so now's the time, if anyone wants to chime in, I would love to uh, chat with you guys. Anybody? Steven, haven't heard from you. Kristen, David, David, come on, you got a good one. It's it's great to hear from you, Kristen. Hi, David. Good to hear from Wonderful you too. Wonderful presentation, and uh, I, I'm on the Valley Clean Energy Community Advisory Committee, uh, working on programs. So I'd like to, um, at some point, chat with you about what we can do to collaborate on that. Oh, that sounds fantastic. I'm very much into that. Great. I love VCE. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm constantly trying to get people to um, opt up to ultra green. So that's my plan. If, if I'm like, have you done solar? And they're like, no, I can't. I'm like, opt up. So uh, yeah. it's definitely a, a fantastic talking point on how you can do renewables without actually having renewables. Woo. So I'm so, I'm so proud to be part of that. Great. Okay, great. Well, that was fun. I don't really have much else on my agenda. So, can we sign off early? You guys, any objections? 
Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. Please continue to um, post onto social media using that hashtag and to uh, use our handle, which is at Cool Davis City, because that's allowing us to compile all the awesome tips and tricks that our community is doing. Um, and it will allow us to really kind of keep track of uh, uh, who are the movers and shakers in our community trying to lower their home energy use. So thank you very much. I can stay a few more minutes if anyone wants to ask me an individual question. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much for joining us and please support us. It's the big day of giving. So thank you very much. Chrissy, it's really fun. Fantastic. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Chrissy. Fabulous job, my dear. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Chrissy. That was great. Oh, good. I'm it was, glad it was you so, thought so. It, it, uh, well, it's, it's fun to have David on, too. I think, you know, it's, he's, for someone like that to be viewing this at this point in time is great. So, Exactly. Got to preview my stardom before I, before I go big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also, you know, making those connections um, at all different levels with uh with bce so mm -hmm. i was hoping to nudge uh, mitch and a few other people from bce to be viewing today i thought i thought tessa might make it but oh well yeah i see david and sarah are still on and my question is when is your next webinar chrissy backman oh let i don't have one planned but the next one i'm gonna plan it's gonna be more organized <laughs> <laughs> so whenever it is it felt very organized. Oh, it did? Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. Okay. Whew. That was my <laughs> definite concern. Um, not a big audience, but everyone was very valued that came. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah is my friend from Chicago, so probably a lot of this stuff is not as applicable to her. But thank you, Sarah, for joining me. Oh, I love, I love it. It's, uh, uh, thank you, Chrissy. Very enjoyable. <laughs> I wish I lived in Davis. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come visit us anytime and share. Oh, I will. You can stay in my house, <laughs> my energy efficient house. I All do right. have another question for you, Chrissy, but um, it's pretty complicated and I don't know if you'd know the answer and it's all the way out here in Illinois. So I'll ask you. Well, yeah, uh, go ahead. Well, my husband and I, when we take walks, um, I notice how much light pollution there is. And we live across the street from a library and they have all their lights on all the time. And I have no idea how to go about trying to get the neighborhood to consider maybe turning off some of those lights. It seems completely wasteful. And I was mm. going to see if maybe someday you could help me. I really, I just have no idea how to go about it. Ah, yes. Well, that is good. We have some light ordinances um, that we could probably refer you to. I don't know if your community has them, but basically they're trying to so there's less light pollution. Um, does Chris, do you have any? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, what's that? What, what was your well, feedback on that? So the city of Davis has actually done a lot of advising of other cities about their uh, lighting policies and some of the decisions they've made. Um, and the reason they've been able to do many of the things that they do here is because they've had a partnership with the uh, California um, Center for Lighting Technology that's on campus at UC Davis. Um, so the city, um, when it started converting all of its lights from uh, its uh, sodium lights to uh, LEDs a few years ago, um, they had to deal with this question of having a, a light ordinance that was, uh, you know, restricting light that would be reflected up into the sky, so a dark sky ordinance. And, um, you know, issues around the quality of light from LEDs, whether it was too bright or too dark. And they worked with the manufacturers of the lighting to um, temper the lighting um, levels for different parts of the city. For So lower lights in neighborhoods and higher um, and bluer lights in, in um, uh, sort of big street areas. 
And the other thing they did is that in all of our parks and green belts now, especially we have um, lights that adjust uh, to movement. So as people move around the community on their bicycles or when they're walking, the light comes up for them as they enter a new space and, and goes down after they leave it. Um, and the UCD has been, um, and there's a number of other universities around the country that have been doing this as well, been um, switching over all of its lighting you know, for um, both inside and outside buildings to smart lighting technology. And so there are a lot of really cool tools that, that um, conserve a lot of energy on top of making it um, even safer, but also not, you know, and having to deal with so much light pollution. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's the selling point with the local authorities is that they can save money. Yeah, um, they have a, and they can, and they can do it over time. You know, you, you put together a plan and then you invest in it over time. So the city of Davis did that by borrowing it, uh, money from its, um, one of its other utility funds, borrowed money from itself, paid itself back from the savings um, that um, they had for um, the energy savings from the new lighting. Um, so there are a lot of really good solutions out there. And I, I guess uh, Chrissy could probably point you at some of them. Thank yeah, you. that'd be great, Chris. If you could like share the maybe the dark skies ordinance with me, I'll make sure it gets it. And then, yeah, Sarah, it might be something you have to go to your city council meeting for. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> but, I would definitely. But Chrissy, Chrissy, there are some really great reports. I think staff reports mm -hmm. from the city of Davis on the lighting okay. program because they they proposed some things and they went through. There were some, you know, there was some controversy about whether people liked it or not. And and then the back end of the program, all of the uh, cost savings as well as uh, the energy savings because we're meeting some of our energy and greenhouse gas goals that way as well. So it was really, um, uh, there's some really good data and, um, and the city staff, former city staff, uh, Mitch Sears is always willing to chat with uh, uh, representatives of other cities who want to know more about what we did here. Awesome. Okay, so Sarah, I'll send you some stuff um, as I uh, acquire it. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so we met our time. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to end the meeting now, but thanks everyone for all your support. Great job, Chrissy. Thanks. Thanks. You're right. welcome. Bye. 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 Thank you.